One of the oldest debates in songwriting is what should I write first? Should I write the lyrics first or should I write the music first? We're going to talk about that today by diving into two huge advantages of each and two huge disadvantages of each so that you can think through which choice might be best for you with your next song. Let's talk about it. Hello, friend. Welcome to another episode of Songwriter Theory. Today, I am excited to be spending some time with you, talking with you about songwriting. We're talking about two advantages and two disadvantages of both lyrics first songwriting and music first songwriting. Before we dive in, if you want a really practical guide that will give you five ways to start writing a song with music first and five ways to start writing a song with music first, as well as two bonus ways or one bonus way. I forget. I think two bonus ways. That's sort of a hybrid of both. Be sure to get my free guide. It's at songwritertheory.com slash free guide. Link will be in the description below, especially if you're on YouTube. Um, That guide walks you through 10 ways to start writing a song, right? Five from a lyrical perspective or starting with lyrics and five starting with music as well as the two bonus ones that I was mentioning. So be sure to go pick that up. That will give you some practical here. Start with this, do this thing. Whereas today we're talking a little bit more philosophically about, okay, what are the advantages and disadvantages of each? Let's dive right in. Lyrics advantage, number one. This is the easiest way to make sure to get the words exactly right. So I've talked before and had a whole episode called Songwriting is a Funnel. And if you weren't here for that, basically the idea is that a funnel, right, at the top has the most space, and then over time it gets less and less and less space until the bottom of the funnel is honestly very thin. So the idea is, similarly, you have a ton of creative space when you first start, right, because you have no, you have nothing preventing you from making any creative choice, right? You haven't picked a key for your song. You haven't picked a rhythm. You haven't picked a beats per minute. You haven't picked, you haven't even picked a theme for the song, right? So you have endless options at first, but with each thing you choose, right? Once you start writing a melody, you now are somewhat constrained with the amount of syllables you can have per line, right? Because you can't have a a five note melody that has 12 syllables worth of words, right? That, that's not going to work. So with each creative cho- choice you make, you have less creative room in the same way that if you're painting on a canvas, right? Before you put any paint on that, there's unlimited options. But once you commit to a night sky, right? Now your options are somewhat limited with what you can do with the rest of the painting. So in, a, in the same way, if you start with lyrics first, The advantage is you have infinite creative room, right? It's like the blank canvas. You can write about anything. You don't have music that already has a tone and a feeling to sort of define where your lyrics need to go. You don't have a melody that's forcing you to have a certain amount of syllables per line, right? You can just write poetry completely agnostic of the fact that someday you're going to put it to music. So you can just make sure to get the words precisely right without having to worry about some of those other concerns like how will I fit this to music later and all that sort of stuff. Because you're writing the lyrics first, getting that right, and then you'll worry about the the music next. So that's a huge advantage. But on the other side, the disadvantage, so disadvantage number one for lyrics is the tendency is to get too wordy. Uh, Honestly, I started out doing a lot more lyrics first because lyrics have always been super important to me. And I was sort of under the impression that in order to get lyrics the most right, you had to start with lyrics first, which I don't agree with anymore. Um, But we'll cover that later. But at the time, I thought the best way to get lyrics to be really, really good and meaningful was to write those first. And that it would be really hard to do that if I did music first. So because of that, and because of my background, which was I started songwriting really young, right? And at the time I was sort of getting into writing articles and other things, like articles as in like I fantasized about being somebody who wrote articles for a newspaper, right? I apparently aimed really small and really large at the same time because I also had, you know, delusions of being the biggest, music person, star, whatever, ever, obviously, and the greatest songwriter of all time, of course, right? Like, obviously. So, um, but anyway, give me a break. I was 10 years old. Okay. So, um, that being said, the, the first thing I really started doing 
on my songwriting journey was effectively copying songs that already existed and rewriting lyrics for them. Because at the time I was too young to really come up with my own melodies and stuff. So I realized accidentally I sort of used just stole melodies from songs I knew and then I wrote new lyrics for them. So because of that, I had a very lyrics heavy background. And when I went to get my first album professionally mixed, what the person says to me is, man, you're pretty good with lyrics, but you also have a tendency to get a little too wordy sometimes. And I was just looking at some of my, my old lyrics and boy, was he right. One line I saw had 13 words in it. And most of those words were not one syllable. <laughs> so it was easily over 20 syllables long for a single line. A single line, right? Like, that's a lot. Whereas now, on average, I'm probably hitting five to ten syllables on most lines. So this was easily double that. And wordiness sometimes is harder to remember. Sometimes it doesn't flow as nicely musical, musically, right? Because musical phrases tend to be shorter. You don't usually have a musical phrase that's like 20 notes long. That's not super common. Can it be done? Yes, of course it can be done. Can it work? Yes, it absolutely can. But the tendency is to go a little bit more on the wordy side when you write lyrics first because the downside of that positive that you're not, you don't have to think about the music yet is you also don't have to think about the music yet, right? So you can get into something that like works as poetry and works as imagery and works as a story, uh, but maybe might be a little too plodding along too many words for a song. Music. What is an advantage of writing music first? Well, it's easier to write more interesting music and riffs. So... Same thing as that funnel concept, right? If you, the first thing you do when you are writing a song is you go to the piano or the guitar and come up with a riff that you find really catchy, or, you know, you go to the piano and, and you figure out like a cool little piano riff that sounds interesting and intriguing and it's got a lot of movement to it and it's got a really, you know, maybe it's a pretty sound, maybe it's an epic sound, I don't know what it is. Regardless, right? Again, this is the blank canvas concept. You don't have to think to yourself, okay, I need to make sure that the words I already have fit into this framework of like, okay, this, this riff maybe for it to sound right needs to be played at like 80 beats per minute. But in order to fit my musical, my lyrical phrases into this that are 13 words long, I'd have to have like every note and every word I sing be super short and it, may, it just might be clunky and it doesn't work well. And then, you know, also you have to keep in mind that as you're writing and as the creative funnel is getting smaller and smaller, it's going to be harder and harder for you to write an interesting riff, right? If you have a whole song written and now you're like, oh, let me write an interesting bass line, but you already have the chord progression. You already have the lyrics. You already, now it's gonna be really, really hard to write an interesting bass line because you're so far down the funnel. You don't have that much creative room now. There's certain chord progression you need to fit into. There's, there's a certain melody that you need to not get in the way of, things like that. So it is easier to write more interesting music and riffs when you start with music first, right? So it's easier to write a great bass line if you write a great bass line first and you're not worried about the lyrics yet or fitting into a theme or anything because you don't even know what the theme is. You're going to let the music sort of inspire the theme. So what's a disadvantage? This is one I see a lot, especially if you're a musician first. And I've talked about this even fairly recently, right? I think a reason, the tendency is that the lyrics are the weak spot of a lot of songs. This is true from anything from pop radio where lyrics are largely garbage. And that's partially, I think, because they know people don't care about lyrics when they're listening to pop and therefore they just phone it in because it doesn't matter. Uh, to a lot of really successful bands where you would think maybe people would care about the lyrics. Like, almost always. It's not the melodies that are the weak spot, usually. It's not the musicality, for sure, right? There's a lot of really talented musicians out there that are are making music 
but the lyrics are very often lackluster. And the reason for that, I think, is because most of us, right, most of the time, if you're a songwriter, your story isn't, I was a poet and then I learned music so that I could become a songwriter. Usually your story is, I was a musician and I said to myself, dang, I want to write my own songs, right? So you're a musician first. So it's easy to write music first, right? Because we're talking about the music first disadvantage. So you as a musician write the music first. Now it's really easy because you know you're just lyrics away from a complete song and you're really excited about this new song. So it's really easy at that point to sort of phone in the lyrics and say, ah, oh, it's good enough. I just want this song to be done, right? Because I'm so excited about the music. I'm so excited about the, the cool guitar riff. I'm so excited about this interesting piano part, right? I'm so... Even the melody, right? As important as the melody is, maybe you're just so pumped about this melody that you forget, well, maybe the melody needs to be attached to really good lyrics for anybody to give a rip about it. So I think this is a huge, huge disadvantage, especially if you are a person who has tendencies towards, ah, do lyrics really matter? If you even kind of think that, Music First is going to give you this disadvantage. It's going to be really easy for you to write very lackluster or, if we're being less kind, terrible lyrics when you write the music first, so you're just lyrics away from being done, you want to be done, are you really going to be willing to take the next three months to like make that lyric really, 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 really awesome? Are you? I don't know. You tell me. So that's a, that's a disadvantage. Back to lyrics. Advantage number two. When you write lyrics first, a lot of times, the lyrics sort of make their own melodies. So you've probably heard about the concept of word painting, right? Word painting is sort of this idea that what you're expressing with your words is matched with a melody. So a really easy example of this is let's say, you know, I th so for example, there's that song like you're so high, high above me or whatever, right? What is the high note of that, of that line? You're so high, high above me. The word high is the highest note, right? So that's sort of almost a word painting concept, right? And that's at its most basic level. Another example might be if you have a song that's sort of about chaos and you have, while you're singing about chaos thematically, your melody is actually chaotic to really more solidify that idea, right? Like not only are you talking about chaos, but your, your, your melody is embodying the chaos. So that's word painting, right? When you start with the lyrics and you have you, so you have the lyrics, right? Now you can make the melody and the chords and the key, anything you want, because all you have is lyrics. So the musical tapestry is completely un, uncreated, right? It's not even started. A lot of times as you look at the lyric right? You almost can feel what the melody needs to be based on the concept of word painting and the idea of like, you see the words and they almost have a melody in and of themselves. A lot of times it really, something I find very helpful is if you're looking at a lyric and you're trying to write a melody, something I find really helpful is I imagine, you know, in concerts, where they have like, you know, the candles come out kind of concept, right? And the candles go back and forth. Or the artist starts by singing a really popular song that everybody knows, a cappella, right? Like they're not, that they have none of the instruments, the lights are down, people have the candles out, and everybody's just singing together in unison this melody and lyric that's so meaningful. Maybe it's the chorus of one of their biggest hits. And you're all singing it together, Right where like the song doesn't even need the awesome guitars. The song doesn't even need the piano riff. The song doesn't even need any of that stuff to be freaking awesome because the melody and the lyrics are so emotional and so awesome in and of themselves. They don't even need that other stuff to be freaking baller, right? Um, so a great way, I think, and at least has helped me to write a melody off of writing lyrics first can be to just imagine that you're in that scenario. What can you, how can you sing these words to evoke the emotion of the words? And that's a huge advantage. I think of lyrics first, the lyrics can write their own melodies and there's no better way to make sure the melody fits the lyric perfectly 
than to write the melody from the lyric when you have no chord progression or anything to hold to. You just have the lyric to stay responsible to. You just have the lyric that you need to honor with your melody. Lyrical disadvantage, number two. Assuming you have high lyrical standards, this often will result in making less progress early in the songwriting process. What do I mean by that? So, in general, I think, if you have a high lyrical standard, it is a lot harder to write lyrics, and lyrics end up taking a lot more time than the music. In my opinion, even as somebody who prides myself on lyrics, I end up spending a lot of time on lyrics that it doesn't take me nearly as long to come up with like a cool piano riff that I like, a good melody that I like, a combination of those two, right? The chords, that part. It's much, much easier for me to sit at a keyboard and then within an hour have a piano riff that can be the whole verses for a song, right? I don't have my chorus yet, but I have my verses via that piano riff easily in an hour, right? I have tons of piano riffs out there that I've, I really like just waiting to be developed into a full song. Lyrics though, if you have high lyrical standards can be a really tough, long slog. Even if you follow my six step lyric writing process, which I think is super helpful for that, it's still a long process that helps you to at least make steady progress throughout the process of, of lyric writing instead of just sort of staring at a blank page or thinking, what now? This lyric isn't very good. How do I fix it? It walks you through all those steps, yes, and that's very helpful, but it still takes a while when you have high lyrical standards. And the reality is a lot of times, right, like if you've ever done a to-do list, isn't it really just, it, it motivates you, right, when you do, when you check the first thing, right? So if you're dreading Saturday morning errands and you are like, okay, uh, fine, you know, it's 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. You've been up for two hours. You just can't bring yourself to get out and start the errands. But once you do the first errand, you almost are like, oh, okay, yeah, that felt good to get something done and feel like I'm done with that, right? I cash that check if you live in the 14th century where they still use checks. And yes, I know there weren't checks in the 14th century. The joke is that checks are old. Don't use them because it's like stamps, right? I don't even know if I have stamps in my house. But anyway, that's a side thing. So the reality is probably if you start with lyrics first, you're signing up for maybe months of like just stop and go tough progress compared to when you write the, the music first, it often can flow just from like improvising, right? Improvising words that are pretty good and improvising music that's pretty good, not even close to the same. It's a lot harder to improvise words that are really good. Uh, you're basically not going to do it, generally speaking. You'll have moments probably, but overall, it's, it's writing is editing is a common phrase, right? And it's so true. Um, but for music, I think it's a lot easier to sort of just improvise for a while and, and come across something really good. Maybe, you know, finesse it a little bit, change a couple things, maybe go up uh, in the melody instead of down once in a while or, you know, some little adjustments away from being really good. Sorry for kicking the camera for those of you watching on YouTube. Um, so that's sort of that second disadvantage of lyrics. Musical advantage number two, it tends to be easier to write lyrics that match music than the other way around. So yes, lyrics can sometimes write their own melodies. That's definitely true. But... There are also difficulties with that. As oftentimes it is a lot more natural to write and think of words that match a musical emotion than it is to write the rest of the music, right? So there's, there's more than just melody to music. And yes, once you have a melody, it's easier to come up with the chords to support the melody. But especially if you're interested in writing more than just, you know, basic block chords or say you're a guitarist and you want to stay away from like boring strumming chords, right? Which again, I've said this before and I feel like I clarify this every time. There's nothing wrong with strumming chords, right? But sometimes, you know, you don't want all of your songs to just be basic strumming of G chords and C chords, right? We want to get out of that. So sometimes it's a lot easier 
as far as tone to listen to music that you've written, really feel what the music is conveying. And from there, figure out what should this song be about? What is the tone of this song? What are the feelings and the emotions at play in this song, right? In the way that you can listen to a classical music piece and you can feel the emotion of it. There are no lyrics to tell you what the song's about, but you still can feel what the song is about, at least more or less, right? Like, you know, maybe maybe it's about the loss of, you know, a, 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 a wife, but it makes you think of the loss of a child or something, right? But they're in the same vicinity. So as far as the whole musical picture, a lot of times if you start with a piano riff or a cool guitar riff, it's easier to see, say, okay, the, the emotion of that is this. So let, now let me write a lyric on this. Then it is to write a whole lyric and say, okay, what's a cool guitar riff? Or what's a cool piano riff that I can write that conveys that emotion? That is a harder thing to do. I think the melody part, again, like like I said before, the melody part, yes, yeah, sometimes the lyrics write the melody in and of itself. And the melody is the most important thing, which is that strength of lyric writing, I think. If you nail the lyric and the melody, you're like 90% of the way to a great song a lot of times. But the best way to get 100% of the way to a great song is to have awesome riff, like a, you know, a hook or piano riff, guitar riff, whatever it is, that memorable, repeatable, musical theme, if you will, or motif, um, and to nail the melody and the lyrics. And I think the best way to do that and get all three is actually to start with the music first, because it's easier to look at a piano riff and say, here's the emotion of that thing, let me write a lyric off of it, than it is to say, here's a lyric that then writes its own melody, now let me write a piano riff that matches with that. I believe that that is generally harder. Finally, last one. This is disadvantage number two for music. It can be difficult to fit your story or lyrical idea into the preset musical framework. So let's say you write a song where you have two verses, two choruses, a bridge, so three choruses, let's say three choruses, your standard verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. But your story really demands that there be three verses, you don't need a bridge, or, you know, maybe you need four verses in in order to tell the whole story and do it justice. So maybe, so maybe in sort of, instead of four verses, you're doing three verses and then the bridge sort of completes the story, um, which is a very effective thing to do, by the way, using that bridge as sort of the final way to complete the story, since the chorus tends to be a little less story driven, a little more thematic driven, right? The chorus is when you're talking about the overall theme, the overall concept, uh, and the verses and sometimes bridge tend to tell the story. But when you start with music, now your lyrical journey is now confined, right? Because maybe, you know, you could add a third verse, obviously, you know, instead of doing verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, you could do, you could do verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, verse, chorus, or verse, chorus again, and then bridge, chorus, or some other alternative. But because of, say, other constraints, like, for example, if you really feel the need to have three verses, but honestly, you, it the song just feels like it drags after, like, three verses is just a lot. It's, it can be hard to pull off three verses and keep things interesting. So maybe, in your case, in order to tell the story you want to tell, with the beats per minute that your song is at musically, right? Because once you come up with a piano riff, you can slow it down or speed it up a little bit. Or, and that's true of guitar riff, really any music, right? If you slow it down or speed it up by more than a couple beats per minute, it really starts to feel like it drags, right? If you've ever played in a band, you know that it's really common for people to be like, oh, I don't know, it just feels like it's dragging, right? Or we f- it feels like we're rushing, it would going too fast, right? If you've ever been in a choir, you've heard that, right? And it really does make a huge difference. So because of that, once the music is written, you only have so much room to play with song structure without it feeling like it, the song goes on too long or feels like it starts to drag because it's like, oh, a third verse, really? Right? If, it, if they're fast verses, that might work out well. If they're not, 
that might not work out well, but your story, your lyrical idea may demand that there's actually more stuff that needs to be said, right? Maybe your song is a solid four minutes just with two verses and three choruses in a bridge, right? Which is fairly standard or maybe even worse, right? Verse, chorus, verse, chorus, you're already at four minutes. So do you, are you really going to be willing to add a third verse and a third chorus and maybe a bridge to make it a six minute song? Like, can your song last for six minutes and stay interesting? Some can, and that's totally fine, right? Um, some songs demand being longer than that sort of four minute threshold that a lot of songs sort of work with. I mean, pop songs now are like two and a half minutes, half the time, three minutes, and yet somehow still feel repetitive. Like that's pretty sad. I have to insult pop music at least once per video, right? I mean, it's, it's it's contractually obligated at this point. But seriously, if you write a song that's two and a half minutes or three minutes, which is really freaking short, and you can't keep it interesting and it feels really repetitive and somebody's like, oh, is this song over yet? Within that amount of time, that's pathetic. It's, it's pathetic. Just come on, get off the radio. Anyway, so that's that last musical disadvantage is... It's going to be harder to play with song structure once you write the music because the beats per minute really can't change that much. It's that whole, that whole, uh, you know, one thing leads to another that I just went down. Um, so it can be hard to fit your story that maybe needs certain things to be told well into the song structure that is somewhat predefined based on the music you write. Keep in mind, somewhat predefined. Certainly there are cases where you can easily add a verse. More often I find myself taking away a verse where I realize I got too wordy this time. It, not wordy as in like wordy, too wordy per line, but too wordy meaning like I got like, I, I didn't need three verses to tell the story. I really just needed two. So I cut one verse that was really unnecessary. wasn't moving the song forward and I reduced it down to two. So personally, I think that's more common or maybe should be more common, but hey, sometimes you can go in the opposite direction as well and it works. Work, but admittedly, it's still a weakness of writing music first. Let me know which of these tips was resonated the most with you, whether you've done the lyrics first or the music first. If uh, Let me know which advantage or disadvantage is something that you've noticed before or something that now that I say it, you're like, oh, I could see that. Let me know which one resonates most with you in the comments down below. Thank you as always for watching, for listening. Be sure to subscribe if you like this content because, hey, it comes out every single week week. Be sure to drop a like if you enjoyed it as well. And you're on YouTube. If you enjoyed it and you're listening via podcast, the best thing you can do to help me out is to go to iTunes and leave a review. I appreciate that. I appreciate all of you who have taken the time to do that. I appreciate all of you who have reached out to me via email. And hey, I've started to see some really kind comments come through on YouTube. I make sure to respond to all of them, including the one person who had not so kind of a comment. Um, but for all of you, I really do appreciate you taking the time to write a comment to me. I really appreciate the kind words, which I told you in my replies, of course, but I wanted to tell you via video as well that that really does mean a lot to me, especially on days if I feel like, oh man, I don't know, I don't know, like, did that content resonate with people? You know, I'm, I really, obviously, I'm taking the time to do this, right? I, I genuinely care about helping you. Um, and, and hearing kind words like, man, this was really helpful and, and, and talking about, you know, if I broke it down in a way that finally made sense to you when it didn't make sense to you before, or somebody else didn't explain it and, you know, whatever it is, all of these words are something that really, really, really resonate with me and make me even more excited to talk to you the next time, like what we're, what I'm recording right now. Um, it just makes me even more excited. So I really do appreciate that. Appreciate the kind words. I appreciate that. Uh, I feel like we're on our way to creating a really healthy community. We're all cheering for each other. Speaking of fearing, fearing for each other. I don't, I don't know how, where that came from. It's late at night. Forgive me. Speaking of cheering for each other, here's my cheering for you. In one week, another episode comes out. Do some songwriting before that comes out. Don't listen to two episodes of me talking about songwriting in a row without doing some songwriting in between. You should say to yourself, every single Monday as these come out, if you haven't done your songwriting, you should feel like, oh crap, it's an, another episode came out and I just remembered between last episode and this episode, 
I didn't do any songwriting. Thank you again for listening, for watching, and I will talk to you next time.